document to pick up my wife to bring her with me to Kiev. One day before. One day before. I was in Chicago airport. I actually was on an interview with Fox News or one of the uh, media outlets. And literally, I was talking in the airport. Then I came back to Cleveland in the evening. I learned that Russians had started bombing. The uh, Basically, all the airspace was closed, so we couldn't fly back to Ukraine. And the last time I went to Ukraine was past week when me and Roman and the whole team from our church went to deliver a humanitarian aid. That was the first time I was able to actually get back to Ukraine. So now, as you were sitting in the airport before the bombing, like a day before the bombing, yes. to leave Kiev. That's right. Did you have any no. thought in your mind the Russians would bomb? Look, there was a tension in the air when we spoke to the ambassador, uh, U.S. ambassador. They constantly would warn us, say, hey, you should get sleeve. That's really, we have a good intel. They're going to attack. But I personally didn't believe. Uh, even, even when I spoke to the media outlet at that time, I was telling them, because they were asking me exactly the question, you know, are they going to attack or not? And I said, very unlikely. Mm. So I didn't believe it myself. Oh, wow. Now, what, wasn't that almost part of being Ukrainian was having a constant threat for years from well, Russia? That's right. So when you, Brian, when you said that basically Russia has started the war in, uh, on the February 24th, that's actually not when it happened. In 2014, that's when they started the war. And we've been in a constant uh, state of war, but they were not as active. They were doing this sort of uh, hybrid war when they were saying, well, this is the civilian war. There's Donetsk, Luhansk, they annex, annex Crimea. But Ukrainians have been in a state of war for over eight years now. So if that's the case, what happened that day, February 24th, that made the world say, okay, it started today? They started bombing all the cities, including the capital, including uh, the city that me, uh, I'm personally from, Ivano Frankivsk, mm -hmm. uh, which is very close to Polish border. Uh, they had uh, literally... The western part of Ukraine. That's right. It's far away from the eastern part where, you know, our bombings are in war. It's right so, now. It's so, yeah, so it was a shelling of the whole country and the invasion started from all directions. So from Belarus, they had the troops coming in from the eastern Ukraine and actively closing in on uh, different cities in Ukraine. Now, Minister Skalski, what, talk to us about the emotion running through your congregation once they found out about the bombing in Ukraine. Yeah, um, so basically we did not believe to the, uh, to the last second, you know, that, that uh, this was going to happen. You know, everybody thought maybe it's just a, you know, muscle showing mm -hmm. you know, or something. We did not believe. And then suddenly on 24th of February, five o'clock in the morning, they broke through and we were watching, you know, live. Uh, we were talking to our, our relatives in Ukraine. And, and of course we were crying. Yeah. We were crying so bad because we saw what was happening. It was unbelievable. You know, we, we could not believe that full scale invasion yeah. for Ukraine, for peaceful nation was happening actually. So now, I mean, for a, a fair number of Americans, that they're, they're like me, where I'm, for example, ethnically Swedish, but I have no idea about any one person in the entire country of Sweden that I'm related to. Like, I could show up and have no idea mm -hmm. to find anyone. Mm -hmm. The story would be different for many of your congregants, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, number one, um, do you know what uh, Slavic means? Mm -hmm. Slavic, mm -hmm. Slavic for gospel. Do you know what it means? Explain it to us. Oh, okay. Slavic means... Uh, it's all Eastern European countries like Polish, mm -hmm. Slovaks, Czechs, Serbians, Russian, Ukrainian. So it represents all of these nations. So we are not just Ukrainian, right? Even though we are ethnically 95%, 90% Ukrainian, but we have Belarusian, yeah. we have Polish families, we have Russian. Yeah. So these are all Slavic people. Slavic, you know, so Slavic means all these Eastern European. Is it is is it more of a of a geopolitical label or is there like a cultural eth ethnic? Type? It's an ethnic. Ethnic, you know, Eastern European, yeah. Central Eastern European. Uh, so we are connected with everybody. So right. we are not just we are Ukrainian Church. No, yeah. we have Russian, we have Russian sons. We have uh, not Polish, but we have Polish family in our church, mm -hmm. German family. Uh, so we are representing all those nations basically. So, and and of course it's. It's been unbelievable and painful for everyone, do even you, Russian. Do you have people in the congregation with, I'm sure you do, family members 
there physically, like close family members. Most, most, of, us. most of the families, yeah. most of the congregants, uh, and we have quite dramatic stories right now. I can I can tell you what like what happened. You yeah. know, Please to one of the families, like uh, <clears throat> if you if you know uh, the most uh, most dense fighting right now in Kharkiv. Kharkiv, like and then eastern Ukraine and southern Ukraine. So we have this family. Uh, they just came from Kharkiv two weeks ago, maybe ten days ago. This young lady uh, with a son. Uh, she was an assistant principal at one of the schools, and uh, beautiful family, beautiful lady. You know, like son, nice, very nice. And uh, one day, um, her husband, thirty eight years old, walked out from the house to do something for like two minutes and sniper bullet hit him in the head, killed, uh, killed him wow. instantly. Uh, and then neighbor came, ran to help him out. He, uh, he got killed too. And they were afraid to come out from the house for like yeah. a day wow. or two. Wow. His bullets were flying, you know, so yeah. they, uh, uh, they wanted to evacuate. And this is a story that we, like one of the stories we have right now. Yeah. And this young lady, Katya, and uh, uh, her son, Yaroslav, we're asking for prayers, you know, because yeah. we, we we're working with them. They're here now, right? They're yes. here in our church. They were yesterday, so we're trying to help them. Very dramatic, very and, painful. And the, if, if I recall you telling us this, that the son is 11, is that correct? 11 years and old. And he witnessed this, did he, he not? He witnessed, yes, he witnessed. So uh, we're just asking people for prayers, for support, you know, because um, it's most dramatic we have seen so far. They could not even take the husband out, you know, they uh, they wanted to leave because of the bombing, you know, constant bombing for like two, two months. And um, she just wanted to bury him by the tree, you know, somewhere. But then finally soldiers came and took him out, you know, and then they left the, the city. What, as, as ministers, as leaders in your church, what do you, in terms of biblical gospel response, what do you say to that family? It's, it's hard to say something, but, you know, of course, we as ministers, as church, we are praying with them. We are offering support. And it's, and of course, you know, um, it's, you know, it's so hard, you know, to explain for a young child, yeah. you know, why this is happening. Yeah. Why he lost his dad, you know, why she lost her husband, you know, at a young age. And we, we are seeing these stories all over Ukraine right now. It's it's constantly, you know, it's every day happening. It's uh, uh, so many kids, and of course, we as a church, we go, we we try to to pray with them, and and we give it into God's hands. Yeah. Now, Professor Shurameta, I'm uh, b being a guy in academia. I feel like mm -hmm. I can fairly ask you about the concept of a, a man, a citizen, walking out of his home and being hit by a sniper. Yeah. Is not how warfare is supposed to yeah. transpire. Um, recently, I made a post on the Facebook um, on social media about the these cassette bombs. Uh, uh, Roman mentioned Kharkiv, and so that's the city where they have a dumpster of these uh, cassette bombs that basically have been forbidden by Geneva Convention. And it, you, it, the really the reason you can actually see them because when they fly, the shelling doesn't explode because it's uh, they all kind of scatter the ground with shrapnel. And the, the carcass of the bomb, actually, of rocket remains. And so they literally have hundreds of these in dumpsters. Basically, Russia is shelling with a forbidden weapon. And this is exactly, it, this is the war crimes that are being committed, crimes against humanity, because it's not intended against uh, the soldiers, against the tanks, or it's intended against the civilians. Just to add one more, uh, uh, Janelle, it's your birthday, so I wanted, we wanted to thank you and Aww. wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> but I actually have a comment there because Romans, you were asking Brian about our relatives. and yeah. So my dad, my parents are still in Ukraine, in Ivan oh. Frankivsk. Oh. And right when the bombing happened, the invasion of uh, Russia, my dad was celebrating his birthday. Oh, 60, wow. uh, he, was, he was turning uh, 67 and um, he was celebrating that in his basement. Oh my goodness. Because Sorry. of the shelling. He, they had to hide in the basement, and uh, yeah. I was, you know, calling on them. It was tough. Oh. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. 
So much more to talk about with our new friends and ministers of the gospel here in Northeast Ohio. Professor uh, Roman Sharameta from Case Western Reserve University, where he teaches economics, and Minister Roman Skalski uh, from Slavic Full Gospel Church here in Broadview Heights. We'll continue our discussion about Ukraine with them in just a minute. I wanted to mention. Look at that Slavic full gospel. I got that right. As you so talk about, we're running video since you know, They brought Ukrainian um, chocolate for everybody, so you can mention that. Oh, nice. yeah. I actually have even another present for you guys. So this is the handmade chocolate uh, oh. cookies. From Ukraine. from Ukraine. Wow. Yeah, so it says uh, Slava Ukraini, the typical greeting. So this is one for you. I'm a brag to my kids. This one, be like, I, I, I believe in the so I, I believe in the uh, military so forces of Ukraine. So We got this Ukrainian yeah. chocolate, chocolate for the team. Well. No, and look at cookie. this I don't, I believe right from yeah. Ukraine. So what, what What's most important to the two of you to get to in the next 15 minutes? Um, let's talk about, let's talk about what we saw in the team. Yeah. 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 We have a team, I want to talk about what we went to Ukraine, this is what we saw. Yeah. Yeah. And then, if we can talk about support, you know, for Good morning. 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 Good the Ukrainian congregants in your church, and you define Slavic for us. So it's countries like Poland and Ukraine and including Russians. And so I was just curious about what the dynamic is to minister at a time like this to both Ukrainians and Russians. Yeah, that's you know, a very good question. And for us as a church, as Christians, we do not distinguish Russian or Ukrainian it's all Christians, you know, we minister to people. Mm -hmm. And of course, we are not hating Russian language. We are not, you know, yeah. but, but of course, you know, we are ministering more to Ukrainians who are hurt right now. Yeah. You know, they are hurt, they, they have a lot of pain, and we, uh, it's our duty and job, you know, as ministers and ch as church to minister to, like, everyone. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. And just to add to that, I recently uh, had a message in our church on how Christians should respond in a time of war. And uh, I actually preached about, well, first of all, we need to put trust in God. We need to pray. Uh, but then the, the important part was then to show compassion. Yeah. You know, that's the yes. first thing when you hear the story, what's happening. And I appreciate to uh, a lot of Russian people, not the minority but still a lot of russian people that have showed true compassion to ukrainians mm -hmm. and have condemned the actions of their government and their country uh and that has been speaking volume to us you know uh, and then serving the community serving ukrainians we when we were going to ukraine remember this russian kid who came uh just from russia just recently from russia and was helping us to pack bulletproof vests to pack medicine as we were going to Ukraine, a wow. Russian kid. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I think for a lot of folks, it's hard to even comprehend yeah. the gravity of that, but that's a big deal. Yeah. Now, uh, because of we're, we're limited on time, I'm going to fast forward through the amazing thing that you all did. Yeah. Um, through public support, you were able to raise funds to have cash for Ukrainians, but also bulletproof vests which served you well in getting in the country. Because, you know, so often people are like, oh, here's an old coat or whatever, and people don't need that right now. Right. So. Talk to us about the adventure of going to Ukraine and getting in there with your bulletproof vest. Yeah, um, uh, let me tell you a story how we went to Ukraine, you know, how we got <laughs> it together and what we saw in Ukraine and what we did. So basically yeah. we had a team of nine people, I think. Plus two. Plus two. Two Ukrainians. Ukrainians, yeah. So we went to Ukraine. Uh, and this is recently. Just uh, two weeks two ago. Two weeks ago, We yeah. came back uh, on the 22nd. So ah. we're 
very recent. Uh, so we took like 106 luggage pieces with us, loaded with bulletproof vests, with medical supplies. We all bought it, you know, and took it to Ukraine. Uh, we paid a lot of money for, you know, each uh, luggage piece. Yeah, I can't even imagine what they charged you for what? that. <laughs> yeah, but let me tell you what we saw in Ukraine, number one. Because normally uh, we saw nice and peaceful Ukraine. When we um, crossed the border checkpoint from Poland to Ukraine, number one was shocking darkness. darkness. You know, at yeah. night, oh, they turned yeah. all the lights off. Uh, uh, a lot of heavily guarded uh, checkpoints. Mm -hmm. You drive, everything is dark. You know, they stop you. They, you know, so. And then as we moved to eastern Ukraine, I saw a lot of destruction. Mm -hmm. We saw a lot of burned out buildings and just falling down. A lot of armored vehicles. We uh, we even saw bodies still inside yeah. of them burned down, you know, kind of, they're still kind of cleaning up. But uh, let me tell you this dramatic story yeah. that in uh, Sumy, in Ukraine, I went to this house of uh, Christian people and um, three air bombs were dropped in nearby neighborhood. Everything was destroyed. All those, I have video with them, I have an interview with them. And this Christian family, they went inside of their house it was before midnight. They knelt down to pray, five people, and they heard big explosion. Half of the house was gone, the windows were gone. They were all safe inside. While they were oh, praying. Yeah. While wow. they were praying in one room, but half of their house was gone completely, you know, and then holes in another uh, half. Neighborhood houses destroyed. 26 people died, including three kids. Um, and of course, it's a big tragedy, but this family is alive, you know, mm -hmm. and we are committed to help them out, you know, in the future. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is what we saw, a lot of destruction, a lot of pain, and of course, we are working with these, uh, with these kind of families right now. Yeah. Now, Professor Shurameta, I can tell you're a guy who not only loves economics, but you love Ukraine. Of you, course. You were going to move your family there. Absolutely. Uh, what was it like to go through these checkpoints and see your country like this? Well, uh, it was painful just to see the amount of destruction that Roman is mentioning. I actually went to, to the building where we were supposed to launch the university in Kiev. Uh, uh, I was there uh, we, uh, with a couple soldiers who actually were escorting us. And uh, while we were in the building, the sirens started going off, I, uh, air raid sirens. So we had to actually leave the building. I have a video of us just running down the stairs because you have to go to the shelter safe place. And, and the building is in the river Dnieper. Uh, uh, and so it could be potentially a target, you know, when the first airstrikes happen. Uh, by the way, I brought with me here in the studio, this is the piece of the shrapnel. This is what kills people when the bomb oh. explodes. This is what, um, you know, this oh is what God. runs through the human bodies and Roman said fragments, uh, yeah, the fragments of the bombs. Yeah. So we have a uh, Facebook live on it right now. Do you know, yeah. putting up the picture of that if you want to see yeah, it on the Facebook so, page. So yeah, and, and you understand every day there is at least a couple hundred people, civilians that die every day. It is so heavy. This is just a yeah, part of it. It's, yeah. it's a terrible part of war. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is what destroys buildings, lives. Yeah and uh, hundreds of uh, destinies. And this has been painful for me uh, to see this in, yeah. on, on any extent. So why, uh, of all things you could bring in, why Bulletproof Vest? Uh, to save lives. That's right. To, That's to right. protect lives, you know, at least, you know, at least we can do. Because we don't want to you know, bring something to fight, but to protect lives, it's very important. Yeah. So can I add a couple of things? About, of course. Um, uh, we have a neighboring church. Cuyahoga Valley Community Church. And you know, Pastor Chad Allen. Oh yeah. Uh, Pastor Rick and, and uh, you know, this church has been so supportive. And after so many years, we got together so close. Uh, we have seen tremendous support from them. Yeah. Uh, and we are kind of ashamed not to come closer before, but war united us, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, not yeah. war, but to help people out, to, to pray together. So we have beautiful, beautiful gathering together uh fundraiser you know and then uh we are just working together uh, to continue this support and, and so for for those who don't know i used to live right down the street from you all and i would drive past your church all the time okay. and i remember occasionally going, look at that mm -hmm. two churches right next right. door yeah right. <laughs> so we are ex we're going to be expanding so so we had a conversation maybe expand closer to cdc 
you know, <laughs> we were going a different way. Maybe we'll go a different way, you know, closest yeah. to them. And I just wanted to express thank you, everyone. And then also, we are asking for support. We are getting items together. We, uh, we need finances. Are you going back? Uh, yes, we will go back. Uh, this is our fourth trip from our church. You know, we had a lot of bullet requests uh, taken. Yeah, of course, we can take them and send them somehow, but it's going to take a while. So we hand delivered each one to soldiers. I handed out to soldiers, to the National Guard, to uh, the Volunteers. Of Defense, yeah. directly to them. We took some binoculars. We took some, um, like, a lot of, like, medical supplies. We marked and then we just gave them like a suitcase of medical supplies for this checkpoint to be seen you know, on the you know, guards. You know, How so did they receive you? They were so welcoming. And at checkpoints, uh, what saved us, <laughs> you know, because at checkpoint you cannot go through. If it's if curfew, it's curfew yeah. you cannot drive. I mean, like I'm not getting through for any reason. <laughs> yeah, but, but what saved us, you know, we said, look what we are taking with us. Yeah. And they, okay, well, thank you bring some more oh, wow. and, and they just let you right and through they, they let us go because we have well, we had the documents too loaded, you know? we had the documents well of course yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had everything they, they let us through because i drove through the night i drove probably you know through all ukraine if you know eastern part and oh, we never had a problem mm -hmm. so Everyone. when you walk through where do you go where do you drop off the vest uh we had connection directly with um uh like military Okay. We met with them. We went into one of the border, uh, like division, you know, um, like big, you know, I met with commanders. Mm -hmm. So we handed directly to them. We had soldiers with us. Uh, but wow. let me add to that, that was, you know, how this these connections come about. They come from the church. <laughs> they come from the church? Okay, explain yeah. that. So uh, what happens, uh, church became very active, obviously, in the time of this uh, war and uh, to help people. A lot of uh, church members have been enlisted as well. And so we know the volunteers from the church who would drive the humanitarian aid and they would meet with these commanders. They would meet with these military units and they would find out and say, hey, what do you need guys? And they will say, well, we need medicine, we need food, and we need bulletproof vests because we have been put here to defend Ukraine, we have no vests. And then they would reach out to community of churches across the globe including us and they would put us in touch with those people and of course yeah which is such an important part of being able to partner with you and give because it, it points to what we talk about where we just kind oh, yeah. of just send We're and so we'll passionate. be like oh y'all need diapers and so you just need yeah. diapers instead of asking and right. saying what exactly is it that you need and really serving in a purposeful way that's mindful of the right. real needs yeah, and, and that sounds like what you're doing at, yeah. at, a, at a ground level. It's what, what do you need, not what do I think right. you need. Exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, I was actually meeting with those soldiers, and then I saw another officer running towards me, and then he said, I am a medic. I'm actually a military doctor. Can you provide me with another vest? You know, and wow. that's a sad story. You know, they did not have this protection. We were not ready you know, for this war. They were not ready. They didn't have a lot of bulletproof vests, yeah. helmets. And so I gave him one. I said, okay, you're a doctor. You know, he was so thankful. So, uh, um, and that's, you know, what, you know, kind of makes us, makes us to work more for this and go back and help them out. So now for those here in Northeast Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, who know we've got followers of Christ at Slavic Full Gospel Church, uh, just, just down the road from the radio station, mm -hmm. who have contacts in Ukraine telling mm -hmm. what is actually needed, and you are, are doing your best to provide it, actually going there. God bless you for yeah, your courage. Yeah. Um, how can folks get connected to you in order to help you do this? Okay, um, you can connect us, uh, number one, uh, via website, uh, website which is sfg.church, slavicfullgospel.church, sfg.church, and we are at 5851 East Walnuts Road in Broadview Heights, Ohio, 44147, and you can directly call my number which is 216-496-0947, 216-496-0947, and my name is Roman Skalski. So anytime we are ready uh, to work with you. And SFG. SFG. Dot dot church. Church. Dot church. Okay. And, and you can donate there too. We have a donate button on the, on the website. And we will get some links up on our social media site so folks can find it. You can also reach out to us, of course, as well. Now, if I remember right, You've been on the radio station before, 
with a name everyone recognizes. Yes, yeah, with Bob Divide. It was in 1998 because wow. our pastor <laughs> came in 98, and you know what? You guys did a main job of Bob Divine. You know, mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, we had a nice interview with him, and then uh, also uh, I gave away uh, a number for the church, and people called because we had a pastor who came from Ukraine uh, fleeing persecution. And we had a beautiful story with him and Bob Devine, I remember, with his rooster, you know? Oh, he yeah. With his rooster. <laughs> and we grew up on this station. And a lot of people yesterday were, were talking to Josh and said, listen, you guys were like number one station for us wow. to listen because it was wow. language, you know, Christian r music and sermons. So we have been with you guys forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forever. It's it's part of that beautiful power of the ministry through WCRF over the decades, the really cross-cultural nature mm -hmm. of it. I, I think you mentioned people had learned English by listening to Bob. Oh, yes. No. Uh, Josh can tell you, he, he had a lot of people approaching yesterday because he visited uh, uh, our church uh, like yesterday. Yeah. And people were like, oh, 103.3 WCRF, we, we grew up on you guys, you know, Aww. learning English, you know, like words and everything. Yeah. So it's yeah. been, you know, I can tell you, thank you so much for yeah. your ministry, for your you know, outreach, and you guys are doing a great job. Thank you very much. And now before we go, uh, Professor Shurameta, one of the things I want to ask you about is the, you know, there's always debate in culture about how bad something is. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're in academia, you've been to Ukraine, mm -hmm. you've read the articles, mm -hmm. you've done the research. How bad is it? Uh, so right now I had a couple events. We had a couple events in Case Western. We had a Tri-C uh, public events uh, where we had a historian we had a political scientist uh, can come together and debate this issue. And so uh, it is at the level of what has happened 80 years ago. So there is more and more reference to genocide. There is more and more references to war crimes and crimes against humanity. More than, I believe, 40 countries plus now open up uh, uh, cases of crimes against humanity, against Russia. Uh, when we went to Bucha, I was in Bucha in the Irpini in Hostomoli. I spoke as Roman did personally to people that have been um, literally uh, butchered, uh, or their their families have been killed. We've been. I spoke to one lady who has witnessed people getting stripped naked and tortured in front of her eyes, uh, being shot in the back of their heads by Russian military. So it's a really, it's a genocide and it's a very directed. Russia two weeks ago has announced that they want to take out all the mentions of the word Ukraine and Kiev from their historical books so they will not be even on the record. RIA News, the main state uh, propaganda TV and uh, media outlet has outlined the document how to conduct the genocide of Ukraine. So, and it's a state state media which is coming directly from kremlin so this is how bad it is we are talking about level of 80 years ago when nazi germany has tried to eliminate one nation in specifics yeah. Yeah. and today ukraine is at the same level well, you, yeah, of course but ukrainians shown great resistance oh absolutely and they are not backing down it's a, it's a great nation you know you can uh, i can tell you about ukraine ukraine has been most open to the gospel yes in probably the last 30 years <laughs> wow. out of the you soviet can, union you, countries you know oh, it's wow. a beautiful country peaceful people you know they have own language their own culture uh and they're most open you can preach you can open a lot of churches and they they send a lot of missionaries all over the world uh so in ukraine you know let's pray for ukraine let's you know you know yeah. keep in prayers people um for the pain they're going through right now if, as we say goodbye, what would be, uh, if someone's to say you know, like your top three list of what to pray for, for, for Ukraine right now? Uh, for war to end. Peace. For, for peace, for, for hate to stop, and for people to be able to, dis, you know, because a lot of people are, they don't know what to do. A lot of displaced people, mm -hmm. you know, they fled yeah. houses. And uh, as we were talking, they were like, I don't know what to do next. So they have clear direction, you know, and safety after war ends. So let's, you know, let's keep them in prayers for this. You know, as, as terrible as these circumstances are, I'm grateful it brought all of us together. 
and I hope this is the first of many conversations on the air, whether or not it's about Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we have many other things to talk about in our mutual love for Christ. Yes. Amen. So uh, again, special thanks to Professor Roman Shurameta from Case Western Reserve University, where he teaches economics, uh, and Minister Roman Skalski, both of them from Slavic Full Gospel Church. Again, for more information, SFG, Slavic Full Gospel, sfg.church. They're organizing a variety of different opportunities for you to help people in tangible ways in Ukraine. Uh, you can reach out to us as well. We'd be glad to connect you in our social media sites. That's and right. See, Make and, sure to tune and in. And even CBC. Even CBC. And CBC. And yes. yes. Thank, thank you to Cuyahoga Valley Church and Pastor Chad Allen and others for their for bringing this to our attention. We weren't able to go live, but we did take video. I'm going to post up in a few minutes. Make sure to share this on your Facebook pages so we can spread the word and get more help for the church. Thank you both. Very Thank much. You. Thank you so much. It's time for a quick break. Our friend Dr. Steve Gersovich joins us in minutes. Did you see what Gersovich said? But we're done, right? He yeah. said we can keep talking if, if we want to. Oh, that's good. You're good. Okay. It's all right. This is just a. Hey guys, more to thank talk you. About. Make sure to go to SFG Church and, and get more information. Post this on your Facebook pages so we can spread the word. All right. Thanks.